There's something within us. Something sacred. Something worth protecting. Silver Team, on me. You smelling all this, Gary? Love that smell, KG. See, this is what retirement's all about. Slowing down, smelling stuff, like these. This smells like, oh. <laughs> Covering the spread, baby! Yes! That's what I'm talking about! What are you looking at, Gary? Stop looking at my flowers, Gary. Avert your eyes. It's that time of year again, and everyone at KG Certified is excited about the BetMGM's March matchups. The college tournament is even more exciting at the king of sportsbooks. New customers that place a $10 money line wager on any game will receive $200 in free bets. If any team hits a three-pointer during the tournament, yes, during the tournament, you gotta love those odds. Just use bonus code KG200 when you register. Anything can happen during BetMGM's March matchups. So get in on the action. Download the app and use bonus code KG200 to win $200 if any three-pointer is made during the tournament. Yeah! New customers only. Give me a pound. This is, this get is ridiculous. Done. You know? You know, I, I say this all the time. I wish I played now. A lot of guys can't play. I was just about to say that. The 80s game is such a different game. How many guys do you watch in this kind of era and then watch? You played in a very aggressive era where things were transcending. And it wasn't so much, it was still a business, but not, not in the way I like to think that they formed it now. It's, it's freedom of movement, high scores, exciting plays, I, thunderous dunks, blocks. I, I'm going to tell you why. We used to hold people under 85. 85. And if you did, God. you got a free pizza wow. from 85. Hungry Howie's, right? So we used to say, they're getting pizza tonight because our mentality was not to let you get 85. Mm. So that's how y'all came into game. That was my mentality. Is wow. we going if you're if you're averaging 110, so, we're gonna hold you to 85. And that's a lot when you're used to averaging. If you're averaging 110, that means some nights you're at 120, 125. Mm -hmm. So those are those are like all-star numbers, by the way. Exactly. Right. And and guys would want to fight. They would want to get, and the game would be slow. And you know, people wanted to see scoring, and we were into stopping you. I know they change right now. I know how the NBA is like come down, shoot get it up, the more shots, analytics, the more shots you get at the basket. It ain't even that. It's, 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 it's got to the point where I can't recognize a, a play versus freelance. I, I can't, you know, you come down, is there a call to play, you go boom, set the pick, come off. I, I can't recognize none There's of that. No, yeah, the same play is run on every single team when you play too, right? Pick and roll, high pick and roll. But you had to have guys lifted, right? You had the guys got it away. That's how we won two championships. Um, but when I watched them, Throw the ball, come off the big man, use the pick, either shoot the ball, drop it down to him, the big guy can shoot. It's the same high roll pick. And I'm I'm sitting around going, oh, I saw that play. Everybody can dunk. Oh, I mean everybody. If I saw Ja Durant right now, I'm telling you right now, I would punch him just so he wouldn't dunk on me right in this chair. I have never seen a kid that, I don't know, explosive. Maybe. I'm not going to... I've seen a lot, but that kid, man, he jumps. He'll dunk on everybody. He got a different explosion. And when I watch him in, in, in like variation, he's giving me like different versions. I think I heard Kevin Durant said it best. It's almost like I'm watching uh, John Morant morph into like a Iverson. And then I'll see like a little bit of Steph. And then I'll see a little bit of, of Isaiah. I'll, I'll, I'll see it. And, and, and I'm watching him. Yeah, he has fun. You ever see, and that's another thing. As soon as it got to a point with me where it wasn't fun to play basketball anymore, you got to think of all these different things. Before, you see the, oh, you got a basketball court? You would just go play. It was right. fun. Yeah. 
and give you a few minutes to enjoy the win. Calm it down, calm it down, calm right, it down. Right. We got a game tomorrow night. Right, right, right. What? what? No. Like, I was always wanting to live and party, like, right then. But the yeah. loss, you had to live in it. Yeah. Oh, you got you to gotta get on the plane. The they win. throw it on the plane. Right, right. When we won, you didn't throw the win on the plane. No. You threw the next team on the right, plane. That's right. the way it should be. It should be the next to see what's, what's next. It's the discipline in that window. People want to live their win all and ride it all the way up to the next morning. Till, <laughs> <laughs> listen, when we won, it was some guys. When we won, you couldn't tell them they couldn't go out. Thought, you know we got back to back. So what? I'm in here. You know what I'm saying? We won tonight, y'all. You know what I mean? So what? It's yeah. four o'clock in the morning. You know Let me tell you something. <laughs> Let me tell you, I'm a rookie. What year is this? It's 1986. Mm. And you know, I was supposed to be a Celtic. I don't know if you know or remember. I was sitting on the, at the edge of your bench like 2001, 2000. And, no, 2010, because Doc knew I was supposed to be a Celtic. And I was at the Laker game, and I was sitting at the end of your bench. Anyway, I was supposed to be a Celtic. Hmm. They chose Lenny Bias, which was a really good pick. But the year before, Red is in my ear that I'm going to be his first pick. But he takes Len Bias. Smart move. Detroit takes me. So we play, and I was like, I finally play in the garden, and we're playing against Paris, and I'm, Paris beat me up court one time. I was jogging, and I looked this way, and then all of a sudden, the ball came over my head, and Paris caught it and dunked it. Chuck called timeout. You supposed to be this fast big man and you let a dinosaur beat you up court. Mm. I'm a rookie, so I don't know what to do. I go down to the bar and K KG Paris is sitting at the bar with a scotch and a cigarette. Damn. And I said. In 86. I said, I'm seeing a cigarette and scotch. Scotch. I knew it was scotch. It was one, it was one cucumber, one ice cube in there. And I said, you smoke and drink scotch. He looked at me, I said, how'd you beat me up court? You gotta learn how to pace yourself, young fella. <sighs> Get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> I was like, oh, Paris. That's that old school. I man. could not wait to dunk on this dude. It took me seven years. But you know, by then he had like one leg. Right. But I was in Miami and I saw him and they threw me the ball. I said, oh, I'm gonna get him. And that's the only thing I was thinking is when he told me, <laughs> I couldn't, that was it. You know, in my brain, I was like, ooh, Paris is going to get it. One he day. had always been on that list, huh? You uh, never crossed him I out. have everybody on that list. I had, I got everybody I wanted to get. Uh, and I would, I dunked on Kareem so hard one day, I looked at the poster and I was like, am I erect? Because I was, I was like this and my eyes were closed. Oh, man. And he, and he was ducking. I didn't know he was ducking. I just, in my brain, I was... He's, I think now he talks to me, but he used to not talk to me. He knew my brother. He was like, I don't talk to rookies. Oh, I heard Cat was super duper arrogant. Not arrogant. It was his, if once you get to know Kareem, he was just joking. But you, if you don't know him, if you know me, I come in and I'm joking, joking, joking. You're going to, then you'll see I'm going to clown where I'm at. But if you don't ever know, it's like MJ. You don't know. MJ is, is, it's funny to him, you know what I'm saying? But you looking at him like, man, what kind of joke was that? Yeah, but I clown him back. I, to this day, man, people, I tell people uh, I got in trouble for saying Kobe was better than him. But I literally told MJ, I said, from now on, I'm going to tell people, I think, we, like, had the conversation. He was like, yo, you're going to piss people off. I go, I know. That's my job. You had the rarity to play on two teams that will, that will forever be embarked in in a legacy and that being the Bulls with Michael and Scotty and then the Lakers uh, with Kobe and Shaq. Talk about the similarities with you and Phil being the common denominators in both of those scenarios. They say excellence and greatness mirrors each other. Talk about the similarities in those two teams and how they mirrored each other at different times at different times in the league. Well both teams Committed to the triangle offense. Committed to it, like full on, two feet, right. not bucking. You run the system. Run I heard Shaq hated the triangle. Yeah. He hated it. But it benefited but him. But I was the... behind him. So when I'm playing behind him, when Phil would call something, second guard corner option. To the big man is when the ball goes to the corner, you step toward that guy so he runs off you, right. and then you step to the corner. Right. And then this guy comes off you. Goes off you. As soon as you hear corner option, Shaq would just... Dive Back you down, right. throw the ball he right here. Blast. And then the change. Right. It became like a one-on-one -on -one for Shaq. He had to figure that out though, right? Yeah. 
And once he did, yeah, he became a whole different player. When Shaq wanted the ball, when he wanted to rest, he do do the rest of the plays. Out of all the players I played with, uh, I always talk about the skill of Scottie Pippen, the greatness of Michael Jordan, right. the unbelievable laser focus of Kobe. I think Isaiah is the greatest player I've ever played with because he was six foot and doing right. playing at that Shout time. Isaiah Thomas, yeah, right. way back in that Z, time. Right, but but Shaq was the most phenomenal specimen of a human being. He can swim. He's black. Facts. So he looked like an orca, but he can and he break can swim. dance and break dance and, and move rhyme. like he's he moves like a little man. If he get in the car, he'll ball up. Like Shaq is like a phenon of specimen. Yeah, this is like a five six dude inside of his chest. Controlling everything, Fact. like he, like Kevin Hart is inside of Shaq. <laughs> that's 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 what it is. But it, how tall it, is Shaq for real? For real, it's like seven three almost, right? Am yeah. I tripping? Seven three, me, with seven, ups, by seven with one. ups, with by a seven. vertical man. Yeah, and and he can shoot too many things around him, Fucking like diesel, cats. Boy. Oof. How'd you play? I, listen, I, I I went to chiropractor every day. It was day a couple after. guys I used to. St- like Jordan, obviously, right? I played Mike, man. Mike just had you in the bliss, right? Chuck was cold, too. You know, Chuck and Carl Malone, you know, from, from just we played a position. You know what I'm saying? So I was always in there. But when I watched Shaq, man, it was like, I would, I would be blinking. I would be blinking, Sal. I would be in that mouth blinking like, I couldn't believe this. Dog, I sent everything. I, 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 think, I think I sent, like, a crew of five girls just to walk by the bus when they got off. It didn't work. We used to say, <laughs> Ronnie Hop, <laughs> Ronnie uh, Cycli, he would get sick the days we play Orlando. He got the Shakita flu. I would do everything. I would do martial arts. I kick his ankles. I pinch him. I try to catch him on the way down. He only averaged 13 on me, but boy. Listen. And then I stood next to Yao Ming, and I couldn't believe. I was like, I'm so happy I'm not in the NBA. Yeah, Yao Ming was another mug that was, listen, as soft-spoken as people think Yao is, Y'all was a problem. Y'all would bang you. Listen, I saw him play soft one time, and that was against Sean Bradley in a a preseason game. When he first got out here, he looked tender. I don't know what Steve Francis said to him. The next night, the next night, they had a back-to-back with the same team. Sean Bradley went right up to Houston play, and that's when we saw y'all born. I saw him dunking him more. He was... He was a whole nother, he was the y'all that we knew him. And he never played like that first y'all. I've never seen him do that. Steve Francis. Steve Francis. You know, if you just did a show on names they don't mention. Mmm. Facts. (sighs) Certified. Yeah, Mm. that Steve Francis. That's a good one right there. Yeah. Because he was one of them ones. Maxwell. Yeah. Uh, Ooh. (laughs) Vernon. But I had, I had it going. Hey, man, oh, I'm going to give you a pound for what you did when you got your number retired. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Such a gentleman. Appreciate it. It's amazing getting older, huh? You know what? Um, MJ told me a long time ago, you're going to know when it's time to leave. I'm a junkie. We junkies, man. We play basketball in our sleep, right? Right. So when M was talking about, you know, leaving the game, I was like, what? You know, I'm still young. I got... And then all those things that he started talking about, I started, like, seeing. I started, oh, snap. Oh, oh. Uh, what? And and it hit me like all oh, that knowledge that I was given all these years. I oh, mean, I got to hang it up. I got to put it up. You know, one of the things I actually observed about you is that I noticed early on you had personality behind the camera. You yeah. had personality and you had the rare ability to crack jokes in, 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 mm-hmm. in real serious situations and get like personalities that didn't want to actually be on camera or right. didn't have like an outgoing personality. Where, where does that come from? Uh, that? I wanted to be Johnny Carson. So my, my, my cousin. Are you serious? Yeah, man. He, you wanted to be the black Johnny Carson. I wanted to be, uh, I, didn't, I didn't care if I was the white one. No. <laughs> no, I wanted to be Johnny Carson. And this is a trip, man. I became friends with Arsenio Hall in 1988. Um, oh, wow. and, and I had a show that was in between each of the playoff games. So the news that was following us, the piss and tea, in the afternoon, the day I would go out wherever we were and do a show. And they wanted to call it the Silly Sally Show. My brother was like, most definitely, you will not say Silly and Sally in the same sentence. That ain't happening. But Arsenio came on my show, and he knew everything, talked about it. And he had just, he was just hosting. He had replaced um, Joan Rivers. 
And he was like, yeah, you know, I got a show coming out pretty soon. I'm put the, and then Arsenio came out. But before that, I, in 1989, when we won, Inside Stuff was in front of us. And MTV came and had downtown Julie Brown following us. And I just always wanted to be a comedian, wanted to be an actor, wanted to be a, a rapper. I used to rhyme, and my brother said to me, have you ever seen a seven-foot rapper? Yeah. Cut it out. I had a skateboard. He put it against the wall. He kicked it broken in half and said, if you break your collarbone, you can't unbreak it. Like, yo, you got a plan. And how they got me is, is and it, it was a trip because when I watched your documentary, once again, which was great, I was uh, 14 and Irvin Magic Johnson was on the Mike Douglas show. Now this was a show that came on in the afternoon right before dinner. And he was 19. And my brother said, 19? Are you going to be ready in five years? And in four years, I'm going to be 18. I'm not ready. And I had to go to college. Mm. And my brother kept saying, I don't know. They, they're bringing them in earlier and earlier. By the time you get out of college, you might be you know, old. Like, my brain is focus, mm. focus. So I, once I did that, I had a show called The John Sally Show. Oh, like, and Mike was and I was sitting on a couch but the couch was lifted high I had on a purple shirt and my glasses and MJ was sitting there in his suit being all cool because I was taking him to dinner after he did my show and you know I, I just said this is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna talk to I'm gonna do exactly what you're doing with me right now this was my plan to talk uh, because you wouldn't know when you watch podcasts like I Am Athlete or uh, Up in Smoke um, yeah. When you watch that and you hear an athlete speak, we totally change the narrative or the stereotype of what an athlete is. And I was tired of fighting people. Uh, oh, you went to Georgia Tech. Yeah, I'm smart. Ah, oh, they probably got you in. No, nah, no, nah, I'm, I'm smart. You ain't smart. I mean, then I, and that's why I love Kanye. I was like, you know, stop telling me you're smart. My mom said, stop announcing and bragging about yourself. Just be who you're going to be. And I was inquisitive. I wanted to use, I wanted to be able to get things out of people and talk to them about real conversation, mm. as opposed to just talk to them about the things that they can watch and read the day before. Or the fluff. Yeah, you know, you, you, can't, you, you can't even get to people. I love when Dave Chappelle said, when you call people crazy, you know, that's, that's dismissive. You know, they used to call you crazy. Mm. And uh, I guess I guess you're crazy. Right. I guess I guess having your own studio and doing your own show, you're crazy. It is. Like Jay Z said, they can't see what you can see. They ain't supposed to. It's your vision. But this this is this is. I just hope everybody on that wall is paying you. <laughs> <laughs> I just just drop ain't that nothing in right here now. for free. Let me yeah. tell you that. Like I got my own brand. This right here. It's What's your brand? What's your brand 16, called? 16, 17. Like this is my boy Troy, and I he made a point. He said, guys are wearing alligators and don't know why. And I said, wow. He's saying they're wearing polo, ain't never been to a polo. Fox. And he said, this is the first bird the Africans saw when they came in. And I was like, oh, send me every color, every single thing I'm gonna wear. Mm. Mentality, like don't wait on anybody else. Got you. And, and when I found out that I was trailblazing a lot of things, okay, I decided, good, I'm gonna do it all. I'm gonna act. I got a movie coming out in April, Sneakerella, that, you know, I beat you out for the role. Um, just thought I mentioned I beat you out for that role. <laughs> when they said KGs, that's why I said, oh, they gonna pick KGs. Nah, I looked at it, I saw it, and I was like, no, nah, I'm cool, I'm cool. Like, you know what, real talk. Cause they told you you had to rap and dance. No, 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 not even that. See, not I'm even. the only NBA player to do a musical. I can't dance. I, hope. I, I can dance, I can't rap. You know what I'm saying? And then two, I was like, you know what? Nah, this, this ain't it. Uncut Gems fit me, it was me. I got to play me, it was so cool, 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 cool. So You got to play you? I got to be myself. Like, they was like, hey, how would you be if you came oh, here and talked to Oh, I thought you was trying to tell me something. Nah, <laughs> nah, nah, I got to be myself. <laughs> that was, nah, nah, but. And, and, and once again, it didn't look like you were acting, it means you were acting. Why we say, Denzel is so real because we believe him. Facts. When we see Will Smith, we believe it. Facts. Um, Viola Davis is my favorite actor. Mm. You guys would call her an actress. She would call herself an actor. Mm. Period. Wow. Like I've, I've, I said that to somebody else and they go, how? I go, she looks like my mom, 
And I believe her every single role she does. Every single role, I believe that she's that person. So, so film is a real passion for you, bro. Yeah, man. Real. I got my own cameras. Oh, wow. I got a... Uh, get your production company and all that? Yeah, man. Um, we had John and Sally Presents. Now we have a uh, South South Consultant. And what I did is I started the John Sally Crypto Show. Mm. While we're here, this is NFT LA. Yeah. Then it's NFT Miami, then it Bitcoin. So I'm the only show on the Bitcoin platform. Now, the reason I did it that way mm. is I own the show and I own the NFT. And me knowing that Web3 is going to be in full force in the next two or three years. It's already here. Like right now, we go on the computer, they're, not, they're gonna go in. Yeah. I decided everything I do, and I've seen, I got things, I got a picture of you, I should have bought it. Maybe I'll send it. Uh, I got a picture of you in Houston. So I'm a photographer, like hobby. In Houston, would Kenny, when Kenny Smith had the thing we were doing, you were doing a fundraiser basketball game. Yeah, when the uh, Katrina, when Katrina. the kids, when the people lost their homes and Kenny nope. Smith threw on a, yeah. Mm -hmm. you, didn't, you wouldn't remember it, but I literally shoot everybody from up here down. I got a picture of me and you, you, Derek Coleman, bunch Iverson. Of, bunch of us. Kobe with fun. kids on his back. That was a fun time, yo. Right. I and, and, and I took photos of all, I've never seen anybody put them out. And it was like a great oh. event. But they will put out everything not great and not good, but I've never seen it. And I sat and I said, oh, I'm putting these out. So as opposed to me making a book that would go here that you would have to take your hands and open, kids ain't going to do that. They're going to swipe yeah. or they're going to click. Made a digital. Right? And that's, that's all I did. So I got my daughter and I have a cannabis show mm. uh, about us looking for strains for Deuces 22 and everything to destigmatize it. Um, I still talk about veganism. Uh, so anywhere I can get into, and I like that, because now Kyrie is vegan, hasn't right. been injured, and he hasn't had a, a cold either, nor flu. Fact. Amazing. Right. Uh, <laughs> How'd you get into vegan? Let's, let's get right into it. How'd you get into that? My cholesterol was 271. Wow. I was 27. They told me I was going to have to take a pill, which made you infinite. Yeah, 27. And I said, that's, that's how you're coming into this conversation? Wow. And... I said, there got to be another way. And, so, and then somebody told me about this natural healer named Dr. Jewel Pukram. And then she was in Detroit, God mm. blessing. And I went there. Wow. She's looking at me, talking to me. And she said, you full of sugar, honey, iced tea? Oh, wow. And I go, no. Nah. Like, they told me I got high cholesterol. She goes, yeah, you're full of sugar, honey, iced tea. And what she meant was, and you guys can take the letter, she literally said, once we clean you out, I am my first colonic. I went from 235 not on the one colonic, but the way to 219. Wow. I went macrobiotic. I started taking herbs. My cholesterol dropped like in the hundreds, wow. early hundreds. Wow. And my feet didn't stink. My pimples were gone. You had energy. My energy out of this. My cousin said I looked like, like a burnt back match running up and down court. She said you were just like <laughs> everywhere. My libido went through the roof. And from that day on, I realized wow. if you eat dead shit, oh, wow. you are a casket. Wow. You are a coffin for um, things that should be buried. I got video on the plane. So this is how crazy I am. Phil got tired of me walking around with the camera, right? Because I knew it was unbelievable that this team was going to win a championship. And I'm getting this on camera. So, so Phil, you knew already. You was thinking ahead like wait. 50 years from now, I'm going to look back at this and this going to have some value. And so. I said it. I, I used to tell him, I said, dog, you're going to look back at this and you're going to be, man, I was young. And Kobe used to sit here like they had a table over here on the jet. Where we used to play cards. Where they play cards. Yep. And Kobe was up front. Shaq had his own bed in the back. And, Stressed out. Yeah, These used to fall asleep big. on planes. And yeah. I sat up front across from Cole, and Cole would have on music and be doing this and looking out the window. No one talking to him. So I just grabbed the camera, went and sat there and put it there. And I go, what you listening to? And I tapped him. And I go, what you listening to? He said, nothing. I just want to hear what they got to say. Because they would always you know, be talking, talking about him. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, this is amazing. All right, I put it down. Don't think about it. I find all these tapes, my cameras, the old cameras. I plug them. I'm, I like shake. And I said, oh, am I going to get in trouble if I put it out? No, it's my <laughs> right. NFT, right? right? Who I give property, it to. Right. I tried to get in touch with Kanye, okay? I said, yo, I got some stuff on you. And then his documentary came out. Now, think about this. 
Kanye doesn't put that on a NF on um on the network he was on. He doesn't like As you realize, I don't say other names unless they pay me. Gotcha. On this network that he was on. Facts. If he would have made an NFT and said, I'm only putting out a million and everybody can see this documentary I put together for 20 years and it's $300, he'd have got $300 million. Damn. You would have bought one because now you can resell it for $400. Right. For three fifty, dollars he's paying you to watch it right, right, in the mentality. Right, right. That's why Web3 and NFTs are so much better. Right. And if you just make an NFT, you got enough people who are interested. You just put your money into marketing, which is Instagram and TikTok, right. which is no money. The flips. Right. The more you do it, the more you have people come to your platform. Making it volatile. You can become Warner Brothers. Wow. And that's the new, that's the new age of business. Yeah. That's, a, that's the disrupting part of owning your own property and then being able to maximize whatever the, whatever you want to make off of it with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next thing So is, what college did you learn this? Uh, School of Hard Knocks. You got your PhD, huh? PhD and being a capital N. No, I'm joking. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Forgot I'm doing the show. <laughs> I'm a real like- but, that, but even that mentality, KG, to just sitting here as living testament that you knowledge makes you smart, right. not- reading somebody else's discord. Innovation. Yeah. Being original. First two, not necessarily first two, but you got if you want something, you really have to chase it. If you really want something to be something, you really not only have to chase it. And if you're actually giving people advice, you gotta know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can't be on here promoting people to to, 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 to believe in themselves when I'm not taking risk on myself or I'm not, you know, doing those same things or having people on here that doesn't you know, exemplify that. Right. that. That's important. You know, this show is about not only giving confidence, but teaching and education. And that's why I try to, you know, I know, I know it's, a, it's a gap in information. So, you know, a lot of times I'm up here trying to gather that same information and pass it on to the next, but dumbing it down or right. putting it in the simplest forms. Right. It's not enough of that. Yeah, I'm glad you didn't go to college. You know what's crazy? <laughs> if I'm being honest, I'd rather be witty than book smart. You know, my intuitions and what got me in and out of stuff is my superpower. I've been in some of the craziest situations you can ever think of and just the wittiness of knowing who I'm dealing with, how to control, how to talk, how to, you know, you know, respect is everything. But that wittiness has taught me how to navigate, talk yeah. to owners, negotiate my own, identify my my properties and, and, and what's plus versus the minuses. You know, yeah. they always like to talk about what you can do. Right. And what they're not gonna pay you for? Okay, cool. Let's talk. Let's not talk about. It. Talk about what I can do and how much that worth. So, yeah. you know, all that intake. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I remember my mom. I, I went. So I graduated from Georgia Tech. I don't. I don't really tell people I, I went to Georgia Tech. I graduated because them from New York boys yeah. love Atlanta. Well, shout to the A, right? No and question. all the New Yorkers living in the A. Two and a half hours <laughs> from where he. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but the mentality was when I graduated. Coach said, if you graduate, I'm going I'm to retire your number. Oh, wow. So I graduated, and I gave my mother my degree. Mm. And she said, I said, now I can do what I want to do. And she kept saying, why would you, you went there? I said, right, but mom, I said, I wanted to argue every day in class because I don't believe there's one way to the castle. Do you understand? There's right. not one way to the castle. I had this great teacher named Dr. Adler who never pulled out a book. He sat there. And he spoke, and you better had had notes from last year from someone else, because if he mentions it, and then he points to you, you better have the reference. Oh, wow. You better have read the paper the day oh, before, because wow. he's going to use a word that's in this paper that we haven't seen, and you better know the meaning of it. So he made you read the paper until you found out what his favorite article is. Well, read that guy, and if you see a word you don't know, write it. Say, I don't know what that word, anonymity. What is anonymity? Um, <laughs> I lost it. Okay, yes, got it. He would say, you know, people get to the point where, you know, um, they no longer have any anonymity when they walk the streets. What's that, Mr. Sally? And I was like, ability to fit in. What's going? He looked at me. When I, when I went back to Georgia Tech, he was there. When I, when I, when I got in the Hall of Fame uh, at Georgia Tech, he was there. Like, this dude made me realize know this is where you're going to be. Right. Like this right here is where they already been. You, you get a botanical encyclopedia right now, it's worthless. 
Mm. And that was a book they had to read. Fire. So I wonder, if you graduated from college in the 50s, can you say you're a college, you can say you're a college graduate, but if you're stuck in the 50s, you know what I'm saying? You're still trying to figure out how to work a, a stick shift All right. and, and a typewriter. All right. And, <laughs> and, and Morse code you're writing, damn you say, I'm, I'm disappointed in these people. I'm going to write a letter right. and mail it to them. Right, with you know a stamp. Saying? Yes. Right. Yeah, and, and, and Morse just, code. And dee 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 I went to, uh, to the post Telegram. office the other day and a guy bought stamps and I looked at him. Stop. Yeah, I said, stop. what are you doing with the stamp? Stop, stamp? stop. And he goes, oh, they got a face on them. Oh, I said, oh. Because it was what I said, you really going to, I don't even know how to do that anymore. Real, real. When you were watching today's game and the players, who are some of the players you love watching? I'm a KG fan. I'm a um, KD fan. Yep. I, was a, I was a huge fan of yours, but I told you that a while ago. Yep. I like guys who are intense. I, I'm, I'm big on focus, right? But Kyrie Irving is, you know, I'm with everybody else on Steph. You know, I had said some things because they were talking about Steph this being greatest point guard, and I showed him his numbers to Isaiah's numbers in the amount of years. And then Steph went and got his shoulders bigger and his arms stronger and his confidence through the roof. And now I, I look at him like, oh, he realized all I have to do is play basketball. And when you realize that, that all you have to do is play basketball and everything else falls in, it's cool. And I was able, so I, I, I can say that. I say John Morant, Jokic. Yeah, yeah the Joker. I, I don't know what I would have done. He, I really think he would have got 40 on me. Because I'm, I'm literally thinking, well, I know your moves. I have never seen his moves. And I played against Chris Mullins, who had unbelievable moves. Yeah, yeah. And Larry Bird, who, and I'm only saying that because they're Caucasian. Uh, uh, <laughs> just to be straight out honest, why we're saying that, right? Because we're comparing them to white white guys who were great. When I see Joker play, I I don't know what to say. I I know he he would have given Dev Dennis Rodman some problems because of his moves. When I watch the young guys these days, I don't see those extra in, intangibles. You know, when you knew a guy was great, like say Dream, you're not finna let Dream run all the way down here, set up on the block where he wants to, catch the ball, seven, eight, you know seven, eight dribbles? It's like a lifetime. I'm watching guys in the post get seven to nine dribbles in this league right now. So, you know, we, we played in it. So I get the critiquing on how I'm watching it. It's no way, it's no way in hell someone through these two types of basketball uh, 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 times in which we play, right? It's no way in those two times, in those, in those, if you're going back, it's no way he gets seven, eight dribbles. No. This Even is, Dream would only get, what, three, four max? This and is, then you had to be moving. Like This is crazy. This is what I'm talking about today's game. It's, 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 I'm, I, I don't get to bump you from, from, uh, from three-point line all the way down. I don't get to, I don't, it's no, it's no um, mis, uh, mis movement of where you're going to flow. It's just go set up, boom, post up, and now you get not, like, like today's world isn't, isn't reality to me when it comes to guarding the post. I'm used to a guy, if I'm, if I'm really cooking you, God finna pick me up from three point, I'm finna, I'm gonna have to mix up what I'm doing. Well, it's not just straight nope. going down, post up, it ain't, it ain't that. So from that, I, I, I gotta look at it different. If, I, if, I, if I'm able to tire you out as you, the uh, offensive player, yeah. This and I'm gonna make you work. You said that. That's what I'm saying, yo. You know how you know how you gotta go into stopping somebody. It ain't just come down here and go out to move. It's it starts with in his head from jump ball. I ain't dapping him. I'm looking at him, seeing if he's gonna look at me in my eye. Like all that goes into that matchup to me. So, yeah, so what right? I would do, it's funny that I was considered a, a good defensive player, and I was. You were. But <laughs> Perry Clark and Ted Gustus was my first, but that was important, how to position. But literally how I play defense and why people couldn't score on me, and the difference with Shaq is when they would grab the ball, everybody looks over their left shoulder. And when they bounce, I'd reach my hand and no they pick it up. No one ever attacks the ball. Right. So when I'd reach, knowing I'm not going to get it, they can't hold it. They would put their other hand on it. It kills the dribble. Now you got to go into a move. Yeah. 
If you ain't went nowhere with that move, oh, you guess what? You got to throw it and try to re, re Now, I'm, now the clock going, I'm finna, I'm finna do a, a, a front. Mm-hmm. All the different stuff. So that when I'm watching today's game, I'm looking for those things and how the defense is going to push. That's why I love playoff basketball. When playoff basketball starts, watch how not only the scoring drops, but watch how everybody's freedom of a movement comes more stagnant. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, because it's another thing which got me when I got to the NBA. When you play in college, you play that game on Saturday. You're going to play another game maybe Wednesday. Tuesday, maybe? Tuesday. But you got those days in between. In the NBA, I didn't know what. I woke up one time didn't in know Sacramento, where you were. and we were staying at the Red Lion <laughs> Inn. And, and my bed was by the wall. And when I woke up, I, I didn't know what it was. I just was looking at the wall the whole time. And I was like, am I sleeping? And I touched it, and it was a wall, and I saw the room, and I called downstairs, and I said, what city is this? And she said, are you okay, sir? I said, no. What city is this? And she said, this is Sacramento. Um, This is the game tonight? She was like, sir, are you okay? I was like, it's the game tonight. She was like, no, it's tomorrow night. You just got here. I was so tired that I had dropped my bags and just laid on the bed, and I don't know how long I was asleep for, I'm telling you, I was. I, I used to call my mother every day. God rest her soul. I used to call her and be like, "I don't know if I can do this." She goes, "Oh, you did it every day. You bothered me every day. All you want to do is play basketball." I said, "Yeah, mom, but this, this is a job. This, this is different." This, and then Adrian Dantley used to teach me how to play the game within the game. So that's what I, I told Stan. I said, "If anybody would talk to these guys, I don't talk about what I used to do. I talk about how to do what we used to do, and explain." What's going to happen? I didn't think games ahead. I literally knew I had to disrupt you. I had to get in your way. Yeah. I had to get my numbers. Hmm. In college, I was like, I had to get my numbers. <laughs> man, I got into the pros, man. I was happy if I got the ball. I, I remember one time I said, Joe, throw me the ball sometime. He said, hey, that's Isaiah Thomas. <laughs> that's Adrian Dantley. And you know, Bill got to get some shots. You know, I got to get mine. And then when Vinny get in, we had, we run the plays to get Vinny the ball. And you know Buddha going to get it on him. He says, Sal, you got to get it off the rim. I go, Dennis getting all the rebounds. He said, fight Dennis. <laughs> and I, I was like, man. So just knowing, okay, if you want to score, run faster than everybody else. Point up. Right. Get right? your lob. Isaiah hated throwing lobs, too. I said, I promise you, if you put it up there, I get it. Man, my body was hurting me trying to get Isaiah's lobs. And, and after a while, I was looking good doing it. I was like, all right. But it's, it's how to play the game and how you can be efficient in the game. And I remember this one girl told me who was really good at some of the things she was able to do in her life. <laughs> uh, that joke you'll figure out later. She said, uh, my mother said, you're either good for something or you're good for nothing. So I'm good for blocking shots. I'm good for rebounds. I'm good for defense. I'm good for team morale. That was another thing, man, team morale. If, if, Huge. Yeah, if you... You got it. You ain't got to hang out with him. No. Nope. You just have to have morale when you're on court. When right. I saw that that uh, Jimmy Butler situation down in Miami. Yeah, man. I've only, well, I've seen it, but quietly. But I've seen it really in the locker room. Yeah. I've never really I'm seen it. Sure right. Exposed to everybody like that. Yeah, I, I I feel for Jimmy. He was wearing my number two. I love him. That's another cat I love. I like watching him play. I look at a lot of guys, K, and I wonder if they can play when we play, right? I I think about it. I think about social media. I think about all the emotional things that go on. I think about the mental health. Chuck Daly said I had the best mental health of any athlete he's ever known. And I I was like, oh, thanks. Not understanding what it meant until I understood what it meant. And And when I was around Willie Burton, who was one of the first guys in the NBA to talk about mental health, and I played on team with Alvin Robinson. The best hands in the league, yeah. in the game. Yeah, people don't even notice, man. That goes, that goes to that list you just said. Yeah. A, uh, we can have a show about people that you didn't even know. Alvin Robinson, one, one of the quicker, strong hands, had like, he was a thief. Yeah, the NBA might even not even charge you for some of that. But they do charge. You know they charge $2,500 a clip. All right, listen. I got a theory. If you've actually created some some unbelievable moments for the league, the league should have some leeway with what you need with the highlight package. Adam, I'm coming to holler at you about the highlight package. I agree. 
But Straight now, up. now, as the lawyer part of me would say. Right. Let me hear. Let me hear the definitive part of how you will argue. Let, all me, let me tell you what I did. So what? So you playing lead counsel right now, talking to the lead? You're lead the lead counsel. I'm like, well, you know, you just you were at work. Yeah, we are, and we did get paid for those right. things. So I nobody at IBM says, hey, let me have that computer. That I put computer together. That I did while I was at work. That's Got what it. they're gonna say. That's not your work. You were at work. Got it. That I already know. What I will come back and argue that uh, uh, that that piece of work that I did do for you had, had made you some assets. Let's continue this relationship and, and add in some new ones. David Stern, I was the player. Rest in peace. Yes, David Stern said, "You guys want money from the jerseys?" Yeah, he goes, "The name on the front is way more important than the name on the back." I'll prove it to you. And he took MJ's name off the back of the jerseys, and they still sold twenty three and forty fives. And you'll see jerseys with no Jordan on it. I said, this dude is brilliant. No, nah, he was just cocky. Oh, yeah. And he knew how I to leverage assets. I called him the Don. Yes. I said, Don Sterling. He said, stop that. Right. Stop he hated that. that. <laughs> Don Sterling, where's your ring? Let me kiss your ring. Everybody else kissing your ass. Let me kiss your ring. It was one of the, it was one of the smartest, probably misconceived people because of his brashness mm -hmm. and how he gave off his persona. And I got to see kind of a helter skelter, like a cool version of David. Then I got to kind of, you know, look behind the curtain and really get a real taste of who David Stern really was. So. Hey, but look what he look what he created, yeah. right? So um, he had the assets to create it, though. You know, you what need I'm to be you need a dictator. I know they don't like that I said no, that. I no, don't care. Nobody likes that. Nobody wants to be the person that initiated that. But he had a vision of us being international. He had a vision of us being in China. He had a, you know, it, it helped that Yao Ming was 16, 17, coming along and could implement it. So he had a vision. I get it. I, I saw it. The way he went about it, taking AI's tasks off the, off the slam cover or, you know, doing the MJ move, you know, man. Let me tell you. Like, don't even get I, me into I, that. I, I, right. Because he kept one under his sleeve. Let's right. keep it real. I got he it. He kept the Magic Bird, Jordan, Cobe under, you know what right. I'm saying? LeBron going to catch Kareem? I hope so. You think so? I think it's time for another face forward, uh, you know? So I go to Phil Jackson after Kobe scores 81. Go, Kobe had 19. And could have kept going. Yeah, he, he had another 20. The, le the league tap, did the league hit the button on it's, that? It's Phil. Let me hit it. So I said, Phil, why, why didn't you let Kobe get 104? He said, some record shouldn't be broken. Oh, wow. Oh, and I was like. He's certified. Mm. And, he, and, and certified you know, right but here, then bro. I thought about it. Kobe's number two. So he was like, you know what? You don't want to erase this dude because this guy did that. And I said, okay. Now, Carl Malone could have got Kareem. I want LeBron to get it because I want all the LeBron hurt haters to not be able to hate on that. Because think about this. They're going to say Steph Curry had 10,000 more shots than everybody else. They, they, they will not. You're never going to get a stamp of approval. Right. So I want him to get it so he can at least say, because that, well, he is the leading scorer in NBA history. I, I want him to be able to say that or, or say he's, you know, he's right next to a one point more than Kareem. I don't know. I, I, I think some records shouldn't be broken, but I want LeBron to have the really? number one of something. Yeah. I really think records are here to be broken. I got to ask you, while we sitting right here, you saw Will smack uh, Chris uh, Rock. Give me your take on that, man. That's what you thought of it. I, I think saw it Will, in my... I think Will, um, it came out, later apologized. Kept his right up, left up, <laughs> followed through with his left up, which is a good, good thing, because, you know, if you miss, yeah, here comes. you know what I'm saying? Left. You got to be able to. Right. Um, I think it was uh, unfortunate for Chris, and I think Will was right and wrong, and my wife was so upset with my point, and I totally understood Will. I still understand Will, and, and I feel I'm sorry that it had to be Chris Rock. But besides that, I believe the speech, I, I, I text him, I love, love, love you, because it was so much going on at that time, and it's deeper than people ever really mm. want to say. And between the two, yeah, or just between the two, because 2016, you know, he might have said, 
yeah, man, or whatever, whatever. Mm. And but you know, that's why I said it was right. It was a joke. Uh, joke going wrong? No, the joke hit. The crowd laughed. Right. Right. Will oh, laugh. Wow. Just some. But you with. know, we're in a different time now. Don Rickles used to be able to walk in the crowd and go, "You're fat." Uh, boom, boom, boom. This is your wife? Oh, you could have done better. And keep it moving. Does it, Don, I got video. Don Rickles would embarrass. Yes. Like, I, when I met him, I saw him. I literally got on one leg. It was with Bob Newhart. And, he, and I sat there and I said, I want you to insult me. And I think you're brilliant. And he goes, you're ugly. Okay, anything else? And I, I laugh. It, you know, he, th- there used to be a way. But it was a sensitive situation, I guess, man. You know, he handled it the way... He felt he needed to handle it. I know he was regretful, but it's not good to live with regret. That's what Jay Z said. Right. <laughs> it's just not good to live Crazy with regret. Crazy time in TV. So yeah. it was. It, it happened. Chris was right. It was one of the greatest moments in TV history. Chris Rock, being from Brooklyn, took it, got back up, finished saying whatever. Chris said, "I got beat up by Italian kids. Get <laughs> me way harder than that." Uh, uh, I think my hat's off to Chris, though. He he did what he was supposed to as a comedian, just not as a as a as a kid from Brooklyn. When somebody's walking on stage, he's not walking to talk to you. So to lean in to wonder, he's not walking to talk to you. Remember when Kobe ran up on a uh, one? Yeah, ran up on Chris with his chest out. No, no, no. You you run up with your fist out, not your chest out. But Chris did thought he was going to say something to him, and then he thought he, he was going to apologize after that. Chris took it like, hmm, yeah, you know. Mm. He took it, he kept it moving, man, eh, uh, he got me. That's the way it is. But now the Academy is looking, calling it violence. What? You have seen the movies, you motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> you got some fucking nerve. Yeah, yeah, what? Are you kidding me? The movie with Ben Affleck that's out. That's, <laughs> that's violence. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, snap. Oh, yeah, I want to talk about your vegan stuff, man. Oh. First off, you think the league going vegan is a good thing, bad thing? If players were to go vegan, that means they would be in shape. That means they would be conscious. That means they would be awake. That means they would be into how you take care of your body. I was in Monte Carlo for the Laureus Awards, 2002. And Michael Jordan is um, there. We're, we're, and I'm introducing him and telling him who everybody is. We're walking the streets. He don't have to have security up on him. Loving it. And I introduce him to Michael Schumacher. The race car driver for Ferrari. Michael didn't know who Michael Schumacher was. Oh, wow. Michael right. Jordan didn't know who Michael Schumacher was? Or Michael no. Schumacher didn't know who Michael no, Jordan was? everyone knows who Michael Jordan is. Absolutely. And that's, that's another thing, how you drove here on your own and I drove here on my own. MJ now can do that, but he couldn't before. So I guess not knowing Formula One, is, he may know NASCAR. He's from right. North Carolina. Right. And Schumacher at the time is the number one top everything yes. athlete of the world. He's the only person to trump Jordan. Right. Am I right? Exactly. Yeah. See another reason why I love you? There's no cue cards here, ladies and gentlemen. School of this card is off, knocks, yo. This know, is off the dome. Know what you're doing. Know what you, you feel me? In 2002, Schumacher was making $85 million a year. And I told Michael, I said, this dude makes $85 million for driving the car. But he don't just drive the car, he's the car. Thanks. Now, I got my favorite athlete, Mr. Hamilton, who broke his records. And just understanding, <laughs> just understanding how they have to be focused, what they have to do, how they can't daydream right not a second of a race not for two hours you can't do anything else you got to just focus there then they would take care of their bodies that means there'd be no room every year there's 25 jobs open in the nba there wouldn't be 25 jobs you would have the players lasting longer playing as long as you have as long as lebron it's designed for you to play four years and get out the next person to come in so if they went vegan, it would, it would change everything. Their conscience would be different. They wouldn't put up with a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Right now, you know, you run home and get, you know, if you get back in at 10 o'clock, you got to get chicken wings, french fries, and ice cream. Right. That's your food choice. For the next day, 
of source of energy in which you right. got to use to perform either in a back-to-back, a practice, or recovery. Right. There's no nutrients. We're not protein deficient. Right. We're fiber deficient. And right? calorie driven. Right. So if you, and, and everything they give you has sugar. So you're destroying your ligaments, your joints, and you break it down. When, I remember one time, KG, you were playing and you had muscle spasms. Yep. And I, I text Doc and I said, tell him to stop eating lobster. And he was like, what are you talking about? And you liked lobster. I like lobster and mac together, yup. Yeah. Yep. And so, I actually thought that eating a fish or seafood was a lighter versus a steak, right. which is the ideal is to bulk you up on calories and then it breaks you down only to rebuild it. That's the formula in which right. the league builds you off of. Right. And, and right. when you eat, when you eat um, certain foods, certain foods, especially roaches and cockroaches <laughs> and, and flies and mosquitoes, I mean, <laughs> lobster, shrimp, and, uh, <laughs> and crab, when you eat those roaches, <laughs> like I know are, this, like I know this. Yeah, so those are the roaches of the ocean. So when you eat roaches, Damn. literally you're not getting any, you're getting 100% parasites. Mm. So your back, your body is, is fighting, and so it may feel like you got a back problem, but it's your lower intestines. Oh, wow that have no water and are literally, the parasites are trying to find how to lodge. Oh, wow. So. Because that's what a spasm is. That's what a spasm is. In in, in muscles Mm -hmm. So all you got to do, if I would, one of the things is give you a bunch of coconut water. I got a product called Better Belly. I was going to bring you some. Mm. Um, I own a vegan restaurant, a part owner of a vegan restaurant called uh, Cafe Organics that I'm moving out of. We're going to have to come through there and slide and check you out. But I got one now called Mr. Charlie's, which is the McDonald's of vegan. Mm. And it's on La Brea, just below Melrose. Uh, when I tell you, I got involved with Taylor and Aaron yesterday. We became official yesterday. Okay. And these are the, this is going to change veganism. And the reason, and all the vegans are going, but it's unhealthy. <clears throat> no animals die. Oh, wow. So that makes it healthy for the animals. Is this the one you said, I can go to McDonald's get a burger from McDonald's and go to this place go to Mr. Charlie. and taste test and wouldn't know the difference or would choose the Charlie Burger, right? You would choose the Mr. Charlie Burger because you can digest it and two, no animals died and three, it costs $4 more than the dead animal. Then that should make you think. Wow. Last year, they made $900 billion at McDonald's. Well, how do you make $900 billion? That means 11 billion cows, because you only get 450 pounds of uh, dead carcass when you kill an animal. And so 11 billion cows had to get them to make this many burgers to make $9 billion. Mm. Now, if you don't and you just want the taste, because that's really what you want, you bite something, you go, oh, this tastes so good. Because once it passed the back of your tongue, your body has to deal Digest, with it. Right? What we're giving you is they're going to say, yeah, but you got oils and you got, you got, you got cellulose, you got yeah. this. Yeah. Right. I have coconut oils, MTC oil, which is good for your brain and good for the, the cleaning of it's your all liver. all the things that go in with the food that <laughs> everything. Makes things. And when it goes in, even my bread, the sugar that's in the bread and even in the soda, oh, wow. it's cane sugar. Wow. It's not broken down white sugar. So to the point where I get the soft serve, vegan. And they're going to be, what's that? That's coconut as well. Mm. So everything I give you is a fiber that helps you eliminate. And when you eat, you should eliminate. And when I realized people, when you see guys with bellies like this, anyway, when you see guys, (laughs) (laughs) when you see guys with bellies like this, these are your intestines. Your stomach is right here. Your heart is right here. Your liver is right here, and you can touch the bottom of it if you lift your arm under this. These are your essential organs under your rib cage, and your rib cage, but, and then this is your intestines. So if your stomach is here, you have undigested food. Wow. That's it. It's, it's, it's not fat. It is fat. This fat layer in the, the derma being the skin, then the fat, then muscle. But when it's protruding, those are the low intestines which are blocked. Mm. So when you eat something, your body is saying, hey, I just took a piece of meat. I think you're eating a piece of you, so we're going to throw an enzyme around it and protect it, is why it takes so long for flesh to come out. Right, so we're we're herbivores. We have the same teeth as uh, a gorilla, except they have bigger canines, only two. 
and they only do that for fear right. and to break through things. We have cows. Everybody wants to be as strong as an ox, and they forget that the ox eats grass. Right. I must um, say, all these all things these you, uh, eat leaves. Uh, gorillas eat leaves all day. And all day. Over a thousand And a cow day. eats all day, and they go, well, you eat all day, you got four stomachs. Right. right. But the intestines are exactly the same. Right. So my veganism is, one, I educate, and I used to be a preacher. And then I would be like, you better blah, 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 blah. And then I became a teacher. Like and preacher, I, like, like. You know, uh, preacher uh, on Lord veganism. Said it, uh, you, when you first go vegan, you become a born again oh, vegan. Okay, it's okay. like a born again Christian. So you, was you, like, know, you can't talk so to a You was like the Christian. Don Juan of vegan? Yeah. I ain't it, man. Uh, you no, gotta get no. on. <laughs> hey, man, I, I you just, gotta I would, get on. Do you know what you're eating? I was Shout very, to Don Juan. Very right. Dr. Sebi. <laughs> You oh, know, okay, very, okay, okay, I got right. you. And I, I, you know, big up to Dr. Savy. But I realize that you don't have to be shitty to people to explain to them that they're asleep. Oh, wow. And the best way to wake somebody up is gently. If you shake somebody, they're going to be angry at you. Why are you going to wake up like you, you? You wake them up gently. And then when you wake them up, you give them something to drink. You go, what's happening? Are you hungry? Yeah. And then you give them some food. And man, that was good. Boom, boom, boom. And then they feel better and they feel better. And you go... You know, no animal had to die for you to look this good. Mm. You know, for me to look this good, no animal had to die. Mm. Um, and and you have to think too. He said, "Well, they were put here for us as the as the food chain line." That's when I heard that. Let me tell you, I was with Ti. You're not name dropping, but uh, on on um, <laughs> on Super Bowl night, and his boy said, "Yeah, but what about all the bugs and and the insects that get ran up into when you guys are just picking your vegetables?" And you eat them. And I said, well, it's called B12. And he goes, but the insects, I said, well, what comes out of the insect, and I'm not in charge of collateral damage, but just to go and kill that, can't do it. And he's like, what are you talking about? I said, well, in India, when the English came in, they take their vegetables and, you know, they bring them out of the dirt and they put them down and then they wipe them off and then they cook them. And the British were like, no, you got to wash those. And the vitamin B deficiency kicked in because you're wiping off the dirt. You're wiping off mm. the B12 that comes with it. Mm. I don't also eat with oil. There's no olive oil, no coconut oil, no grapeseed oil. Mm. I do not cook with oil. At all? No. If I want olive oil, I eat the olive. For, for, for what reasons? What, what does oil do that is prohibited or does to the body that you Your body is 70% water. Yep. Water and what don't mix. Right. Wow. Right? Wow. So, wow. And, it, and it's 100% fat. God. So when I put the olive oil, which has already been pasteurized and destroyed, there's nothing in it. And then I cook it, it becomes rancid. Now, from that point, I put it in my body. And this is what happens to big guys. This is what happened, I feel, happened to Wilt Chamberlain because he had a heart attack, but he had it here. So all those oils get caught in your legs. That's why your feet swell when you fly. Wow. That's why you get edema when you wear your socks. Right. All that oil is blocking. And it's blocking here, and we tall, and we get up, oh, my legs. And as soon as you move like that, you got to realize it ain't because you didn't have oil. Like, the, you ain't the tin man. Mm. And even the tin man, they put the oil on the outside. Gosh, gosh. So you can oil the outside of your body. And they can say, well, you can have a little bit of coconut oil. It's good for cleaning your liver. Eat the coconut. If it's there, eat the coconut. And I have. I have, if I'm going to cook something and somebody... It feels crazy that I'm only using water and garlic. And when I use the water and I put the garlic, which Dr. Sebi was against, he was, it was a stomach irritant, but the oil from the garlic comes out. Oh, wow. Right? So, and then I don't cook vegetables long and I air fry everything. I don't, I don't fry anything. Microwave, nuke, anything, right? No, the only thing I have fried is Mr. Charlie Burgers. That's it. And wow. And when I tell you, and I'm saying it on the show because this is going to be documented, Mr. Charlie's is going to be as big as the others. And I can guarantee you because we're, we've seen every mistake, right? And we're searching for alternates. Right. We've seen every mistake. Uh, you know, when they call it, you know, it's an unhappy meal when a cow has to die. You mm. know what I'm saying? So we change it. We make it a happy situation. Mm. We make it relatable. That Mr. Charlie says a frown because not every day is a great day for you. Mm. So we're not lying to kids. And so I'm literally getting to your brain that life is this. It's what you make it, right? The better you navigate it, cool. Think about what you put in your mouth. It's the only mouth you have. It's the only body you have. And I'm a Formula One car, so I put high octane gas mm. in this car. 
Mm. That's the way, and that's my veganism pitch. Join Vita, uh, join Peter, and hashtag go vegan. You think the league is going to adopt, thank you for that first off, you think the league is going to adopt this way of life, just like when you came in the league, it really wasn't a bunch of stretching before practice. It wasn't a bunch of yoga moments. You go into some of these practices now, they have a yoga session, they have massage therapy that is incorporated. Uh, you have a, 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 what do you call it? Uh, when you, when you, uh, cryo. A, a cryo, all the things that come into therapy now that yeah. was a selection or a choice to us. Yeah. It's we now, had an ice bucket. Ice bucket and you sat in there and you Isaiah, had ice knees. Isaiah had the whirlpool. Wow. <laughs> Isaiah had the Whirlpool wow. and Bill and Bill had the Whirlpool. Do you know how many tables there are in a training room now? No. Do you know how many uh, trainers, assistants, assistants, trainers there are in the league now? Oh, when I got hurt, <laughs> Isaiah got hurt. First off, literally, talk they about stopped how many... and the lights went out and they went down on him and all the trainers and the doctors. How in the many stands. trainers? We had one trainer. One trainer. He had an assistant, right? Only, only, on, only at home. By the way... Me and Dennis Rodman was his assistant. The trainer in Detroit is probably the most. Mike, Abdenau. Mike He's probably the most uh, well-known trainer. He used to have the scissors on him. A no whole kit. There, a whole kit on him, right? Yeah. Right there for you, right? Nosebleed, tissue, band-aids, whatever, right? Well, for Isaiah. Right? <laughs> but, <laughs> let me tell you, dog. One time I got hurt, and he said, he said, here's an here's aspirin. Isaiah, <laughs> Isaiah got scratched in the arm. They were like, stop everything. And he's a doctor in the audience. I'm a surgeon. They came in and they, they, I mean, they treated Zeke different. I'm just messing with Mike. But one trainer and Chuck Daly would be like, he'll look at you, Twitch, you all right? Yeah, Chuck said, Chuck would look and go, put some spin on it. Let's go. Right, yeah, That's how Chuck up. Daly yeah, would say it. Yeah. You'd be like, the most school okay, coaches okay. like that. He's like, are you okay? Get some spin on it. I ain't got time for this. I need you right now. Get some spin on it. And I used to be like, this is ridiculous. And I see guys now. He said, man, he's not playing. Why not? He didn't get a manicure today. Wow. <laughs> His manicurist wasn't in. Couldn't, <laughs> couldn't be there. That's not man. where I was going with this. That's <laughs> no, definitely not no, where I was no. going with this. But that's the way it seems. But, <laughs> but let me tell you the difference. I went to the Clipper um, facility. Uh, I think I said it properly. Uh, their practice facility. Yeah. And, and I walked in. And, you know, I'm with uh, Sam Cassell, my man, 50 grand. Two West is too well. Shout to my dog. Right? <laughs> oh, my God. Right. And they, they have people to make them breakfast. Yeah, they got a whole chef for the day. You can get, you can get morning, afternoon, dinner. I, what? Yeah. I, I had to have a chef. Dudes would come in, um, and this is when I knew we had to change. I was in Miami. And I told him, I said, hey, man, we got to get food, better food on the plane. He goes, man, these guys are multi-millionaires. They're your multi-millionaires. Thanks. Guys were coming on the plane with, me, with, with, with fast food. Yeah. And I said, dog, you can't come. You can't yeah. let them on the plane. They were like, get out the way. I said, dog, you can't eat that and perform. There's just no way. And then I see, you know, Ocho Cinco talking about it. But, you know, then he couldn't catch anymore. So I just, I'm just, just saying you can't eat like that Thanks. all the time. At all, what I would say, I would just wouldn't, I just wouldn't put it in my body. This, I want this body. It's not just for playing; it's for down the line too. Got it. When they realized, like I mentioned, Michael Schumacher and, and Richard Hamilton, these are high octane kgs. What worth two billion dollars? Hmm. Maybe mm. to to the to the league, mm. to the team. He's worth at least mm. a billion dollars because they're going to sell his jersey wow. even when he doesn't have it. Uh. Just imagine that you let this guy eat dollar food in a billion dollar body. Right. I, I, would, I would find him. Wow. I would, I, to the point where I would say, dog, you can't eat that. So do you think the league is going to make this a standard at some point? Essentially putting better product in, in the machine for it to efficiently run better. That's what we should do. You and I should get, um, mm. wow. You said something. Yes. Yes, you should teach them how to take care of their body. It's a reset. The problem is... It's a reset. You're not going to get rid of the players. There's not going to be a turnover. And if you don't have a turnover, guys start wanting rights. I think that you do have the turnover. If you don't have the benefits from the turnover, that's when you start losing players. And but it's, it's a definitely going to be a benefit. It's a reset. We just had DK in here. He told us how he eat five, three, four bags of candy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so looking did, at so did, um, stop, man. Stop. So did Lamar Odom. Listen, man. Yeah. 
We ain't even told that story yet yeah. on how candy was like his thing yeah. that he ate before the games. Skittles. Like, like candy, like sugar intake. Like we don't like the education in this gonna have to happen because I feel like the betterment of of life and the quality of life is going to grow too. And in that growth, something's gonna get cut out. People, we have never actually been without sugar. Think about it. Real shit. Yeah. Every kid in the hood grew up freezer cups, candy lady. I don't know where y'all from. I grew up on now laters, uh, every every can in the world, Juju bees, fucking Boston baked bean. Oh, I'm naming all the shit, lemon heads. I'm naming you all the like, Charleston you know what I'm shoes. I'm naming all the stuff. Jolly right ranchers. Now, if you name are we getting right paid now, to mention? No, we're not. Okay. Because those candies are dead, <laughs> and the ice and cream so truck is dead. Who ate them. The candy lady or is dead. <laughs> The people who <laughs> they, the kids that were eating this shit man, all fucking fat and out of control, man. Let me man. tell you, you know. So this got to come to this. It's I'm, going to come to this. So this is the plan. The plan is for you to eat the American diet so you can go to American hospitals so they can use American pharmaceuticals. So I'm not part of the pharmaceutical brand, so you can't really put things out. So I tell you ways naturally mm. to keep your prostate at the smallest it is. Don't let it swell. And uh, I've been with the Prostate Institute since I, I worked on and off with them with, uh, since 2005. And then my brother got prostate um, situation, and they didn't have to take it out. He came here and stayed with me for like four months, and then I uh, sent him back and they only had to put seeds in. If he would have stayed another six, we wouldn't have it. Oh, wow. I, I attack everything inside to work it out. I, I give my body the herbs it needs. Mm. Um, I give it spring water. I put uh, baking soda and salt in my water. People, my daughters used to say, I hate drinking your water, it's nasty. Then they put it on TikTok and now all these broads are doing it. Mm. I go, I told you, cause your body needs your, your kidneys when you drink. That's really what you need the water for. Because all your foods, if you're eating vegetables and fruits and drinking um, emulsified vegetables and fruits, all the water's in there. Mm. And Is you it, can have water. Like we have this water here, it's cool, but maybe a liter, two liters there. I take a liter of water with baking soda, with just a table, teaspoon. What's the baking soda doing? Well, it is literally has the minerals and nutrients you would need. Um, I think there's 82 of them. And then in the salt, there's 100, 200. In the salt, is 86 different minerals the body will absorb. Like, you can't drink seawater because we're not ocean dwellers right. anymore. But you can eat sea moss. You can have spirulina. I do sea moss every day. Right. So once, once you have those things, and then a lot of people, I tell a lot of times, like, I take the herbs. I may always put them in water. And they ask me why I do that is, the worst thing that can happen to an athlete is dehydration. Right. So if an athlete is dehydrated and gets cramps, yeah. I saw LeBron hit the ground yeah. and not be able to move. And he's great, but he's dehydrated. Yeah. So I like to get them in their, in, their, in their best peak form. That's why I said if you get the, if you get the leave off of it, eat that leaf. Okay. And the best thing you can do is beet leaves. Mm. The, the, let them tell you about kale. You should cook a little kale a little bit. You should cook collard greens a little bit. Boil, right? Boil, or, or if, you, if you put them in a pan, you put water, and you put water in the pan, not a lot, and you put the greens in it and you just keep turning them. Because you, can, you can burn off nutrients with a lot of these stuff. A right? lot of it, but right. the, the greens are so strong because those are the first things to grow out of the ground. They're yeah. so strong that you might not be able to digest. Some people get kidney stones wow. eating, eating um, too much kale. Really? Yeah. Like, wow. But your kidney, the kidney stone, what is that? The body is literally grabbing something and saying, we got to hold on to this. Too much oil around it. Mm. When we do kidney flush, um, a kidney flush and a gallbladder flush, we literally get gallstones to empty. You get your body to release when you do um, coffee enemas. I have a place here uh, I go to, my girl Dini, called Inner Health, I-N-N-E-R. Gives the best colonics in there. Wow. Uh, when you go in, you literally, they, they teach you. Again, in, in the hyperbaric chamber, yeah. I do cryo. I did hyperbaric, I started that. Yeah. Hyperbaric chamber, I started traveling with one when I got to Boston. I, I actually went to another level when I got to Boston with my nutrition and some of the stuff. Mm -hmm. Started doing cupping, started doing um, kinesio tape before all this started. Started yeah. doing um, 
Uh, obviously, I was a manifester. I did, I did visual. I did, I did all the yoga stuff. I did vibration. I did chimes. All the stuff that comes with the whole namaste. And they thought and, you were crazy. Man, Ella Cert, Ella Cert and I didn't start off on the right foot because you know the girl would come through and she was sage before we do the massage, and he was like, "Come in here with this fucking sage, get your fucking ass." And I was like, "Yo, yo, chill. You, you bringing a whole nother." And I was talking energy, you know, like, this is a very sacred place. You're going to come in here with energy, you know, be open to learn. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we bucked the first couple of times and it was his place. But I'm in here. <laughs> and while I'm in here, this, I got it. So, you know, so to be able to have a better relationship, he opened himself up. And I like to think, shout out to Ella Sir, man. He was one of the, the, the more uh, classic trainers. He came through from the old Boston days of having Bird and DJ mm -hmm. and all those guys. Yeah. And, so he had he he was he was firm, but he, he he opened up, and I thought that we learned together on how to better ourselves and better our bodies. Man, I was supposed to, you know, those days in Boston came uh, real hard from Doc's perspective because he didn't really trust. You know, the old school mom, yeah. when they cut they they cut the roster, it goes to like not eight to ten, but it goes to like eight. Mm -hmm. And those eight get rotated, so it's only three coming off the bench, and then he throwing them so. Those times of being able to find energy or just elude myself, man, it was very difficult. But through these, the, the, through these, some of these uh, forwarding, um, thinking, forwarding ways too. Because yeah. I start changing my, the way I start doing things in life. I start changing up a lot of my dieting and the exercise. I wasn't so much bulk on like, you know, waist. I start using like uh, uh, bands more. I start yeah. doing more sand workouts. Yeah. I start, you know. Uh, sitting down where it's crazy you brought up Robert Parrish because I actually sat down with him and had like one of those OG conversations like you having with me right now right. about his stuff and because he was huge in karate and stretching. Right. So I started stretching a lot more with hydration, which cut down on me having cramps. I go into OT, I might start cramping in OT. I ain't got enough electrolytes. So this is how I'm just learning about my body and, you know, and I stopped. I didn't turn that off. When I was on the Lakers, uh, I feel we got to get yoga in here. So we got yoga on Wednesdays. Mm. And we brought this lady, and she was nice, and she was good at what she did. Guys wasn't paying attention. The next week, this little blonde came in, all white, with a perky little butt and, <clears throat> and new boobs. Rick Fox was right in front, like getting in our way. <laughs> like everybody was stretching. Look, baby, I can... They didn't realize we had one injury the entire year. Mm. Kobe twisted his ankle in the championship. Mm. One injury. The whole year in 2000. They don't take that into account. It was no days where you had to be like, oh, he's out for 10 days. He's out. None. Wow. Not nobody injured. Wow. And if that happens, you literally are going to run into a situation. Like I said, players become conscious and smarter, and we start asking for more. We start mm -hmm. wanting more. Respect. So the league wow. kind of has wow. to let us wow. crash. Wow. That's a crazy theory to even. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting here listening to you, right? And I, <clears throat> all those years that the Lakers was great, you never, never heard once of the yoga sessions. You never spoke on it. You guys never let that out mm -hmm. of your bag. Right. That was the one. They got thing mad. I bought a. In Chicago, we had three Chicago, three massage therapists. Mm. And when you get there, you know Michael's name is up top, and it's it's already like written. Everybody else got to write their name in. Right. Michael's name is like. Like the title, right. Scotty was second. Right. And if Michael didn't want to get a massage that day, whoever was next, you would get mm. a massage because they were tuning the car. They would make. I tell a man, I said, I, I got into NASCAR. After the race, they break the car down into pieces and ship it to the next place, put it together, wow. and put it back on the track. Wow. Wow. Every every weekend, they got three or four cars, but that's it. Those cars are being broken down, put back together back on the track. Wow. They literally have to pay attention to it. And guys, guys now doing it, they, they talked about LeBron paying $2 million to keep his body in shape. And people are mentioning $2 million. And um, a knucklehead would say, man, $2 million. I, I, if I just had $2 million, shut up and get $2 million. LeBron is worth, you know, at least $2 billion. And he has 200 Two billion dollars is not even one. Two million dollars, not even one percent nope. of what his net worth is. Nope. And the fact that he's only putting less than his net Facts. into his body, and it's at Facts. this level, is an amazing Facts. feat and a smart thing for cats to do. Facts. I I wish that they would see it the way you and I see it, or the way they should see it. Um, I didn't 
go to any club in the playoffs. Facts. During the playoffs? Are you kidding me? Facts. I, I barely talked to my family. Facts. Like, the we mentality didn't have a conversation. The mentality was different. The yeah. way you saw it was different. The, ser- the severity and the priority, mm-hmm. s- you saw it different. Yeah. You know? Like, <laughs> like we have a, we have a, a bad boy's uh, chat. And, and, I was about and, to say a convention? Yeah, I wish. <laughs> we have a chat, man, and I, I love talking to these old dudes. How many people in the chat? This, this eight of us. And, uh, you know, this is the Piston logo, the Piston, you're number one. Yeah. And it was funny because Bill Russell gives it to you all the time. You Facts. see Bill Russell. And then hit you with the, I'll kick all your asses. Yeah. <laughs> and I would say, they, you know, we see each other, we're like, what's up? People are like, what is that? I was like, since everybody hated us, this was a way of saying we're number one. <laughs> and if you didn't get it, you didn't get it. But that's, that we, we, we keep up with it. Even Bill and Bill and I, um, I never really saw eye to eye to him until like he, I became a Republican for like five years because of him. Uh, also my file shot got better. My file shot got better when I became a Republican. Right. Uh, Cause he said, you know, Sal, every file shot is $10,000. I was like, got it. Right, it was just the mentality. He knew how to motivate me. He said, you shouldn't miss free throws, they're free. Mm. And why do you vote Democrat? We had a whole conversation. Mm. Uh, he was Kanye before Kanye. Who, Bill and Bill, <laughs> Bill, and Bill was? yeah. He came it, from money, though, right? His dad came yeah, from a whole... But, he, uh, you know, he made some sense. Yeah. And then I, I got out of politics. Mm, oh, really? I got out of it because I really... You? Yeah, you know, um, <clears throat> Republicans wear Nike, too. <laughs> so that's the inside joke. Michael Jordan had said that. Right. Um, <laughs> so I hear. How did being from New York and having that that New York label and everything that comes with NY with, you know, with players that come out of there, just, you know, just people and everything that we love about New Yorkers. How, how did that play in, like, how you, you know, on your journey? Oh, I got, let me tell you. Because you're New York 100% of 100%. the time, straight up. And it, it's a trip. When I go home, my voice changes. What? So if I'm going, yeah, I all of a sudden you think I'm a black Italian dude. Like, I start talking like this. And, and it's a trip because oh, yeah. every time I go home, and I'm talking, if I call home, my wife would say, are you in New York? I go, yeah. She was like, God, Lee, I don't even have to. I, you can, I can just hear where you are. And, and I'm always on. And all of a sudden, it, it kicks in. As soon as I hear the wow. sirens and the what you call, I go to sleep. So as soon as you get to New York, you bing bang, you log right I, in. I'm right. And, and I think it's the air. Hmm. I literally it's think. It's not even and water it, for the, you no more. Yeah, man. because me getting out was amazing. Oh wow. Like you put in a documentary. All my friends, well, one, two, five of my best friends died before I was 24 years old. Oh wow. And then my and so I see it differently. I see it as, whew, I got out. Facts. I got to the point. Facts. I was um skinnier than I am now. I was Thinner, as I like to say, more thin. When Georgia Tech came to me, when when I said yes, the first thing he said is, we got to put weight on you. I was 175 and 6'9", but no one can back me down. And I was faster than everybody else. And then they made me drink milk and and peanut butter and jelly. And I I gained weight. I got, to me, I just got constipated. And then I was like, "This, this can't. This camp. Oh, my hand is itching. That's the formula, too, for gaining weight. The yeah. peanut butter and jelly. Peanut butter and jelly. Does it I haven't time. eaten one in five years. Oh, wow. Like, I, I, to the point where I said I can't do it. I anymore. feel like I need to watch your show to get up on the, the pros and cons of peanut butter and jelly. Well, peanut butter. Uh-oh, here we go. <laughs> this is a whole nother certified moment. I'm letting you know. Just to let you know. We got battery time, by the way. We good. <laughs> we good. Uh, you can have almond butter. And this is the trip. When they add sugar to it, they destroy they it. it. And remember, um, Mr. Uh, Professor Carver used peanut, peanut for 112 different things. And he used the soybean mm. for another mm. 110 things. Wow. So they're not supposed to be ingested. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So, and I love uh, Adonami. Wow. I think I said it right. Adonami. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Not good for you. Really? Yeah. And it's nothing about the estrogen. It's just that your body, it, it develops, it becomes this thing. Uh, I'm going to say the name wrong, so I'm not going to say it. But you would need l lysin to just counteract that. It just helps build things inside your body. It starts mm-hmm. with an A, 
it's a it's a molecule that's not good for you mm. on the inside. Well, so there's another thing. Why how I changed in veganism is I didn't do it. I do it on a cellular level because every single thing in you is a cell. Right. You either are enhancing that cell, cleaning it, and using it, or it is becoming a free radical cell, and a free radical cell is a cancerous cell. Mm. So I constantly smack the shit out of my cells to make sure they don't become free radical. Mm. And when they do, we put them in a tomb, and that becomes a tumor. Oh, wow. So I don't want tumors in my body. I don't want to be a tomb. So I constantly keep it going. So on. that was the reason I got off of peanut butter. I love Jif wow. and Welch's and, and white bread because I'm black. Wow. You do know I'm black, Your right? Program. And, and I loved it because that's all we had. And I remember, man, when we had to get government cheese. I love girl cheese. But I, I set the cheese out trying to catch a rat, and the rat didn't eat it. <laughs> So it wasn't cheese. I don't know what kind of government cheese y'all had then. Your rats ate your cheese? Uh, our rats, our cats, our dogs, our people, sisters. Man, moms. I, 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 government cheese. My mother made me wait thing. online for it. Government and I was cheese like, was one of the best online. thing ever made, man. Dog, you, who are you talking that to? That cheese, there. I was, I was, I was eating all of that in my senior year in high school. Man, I can only play a quarter, <laughs> so I got twenty points, twenty rebounds. I mean, a half. And then my back would stiffen up. Oh wow. To the point my teammates thought I was lying. And I had already chose Georgia Tech, so they was like, Sal don't gotta play. He 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 bullshit. And I literally I went to a guy at Brooklyn College and he had me doing all of this. Stuff. And there was the government cheese doing it? Yeah, and he said, yeah. Dog, what do you eat every day? And I go, I eat grilled cheese. cheese. And he said, You eat cheese every day? Yeah. And he said, the worst part of milk is cheese. Wow. Like the case in cheese is cancer. Cheese from an animal, cow cheese, is 100% carcinogen. So everybody that's watching uh, Certified today, KG Certified, is probably going to change their whole diet, which is totally understandable. We're Wait. with the Dr. Sally today. That's right. It, it, I'm, a, over, I'm a time uh, traveler. The new hit, and we're from the future. I told you that. <laughs> certified. We let people sign the fake mahogany? Not the fake mahogany, but the ba the, the heart basketball joint on here. Oh, there's a basketball. And that's real mahogany, by the way. These are the KG certified. Bet MGM. Anything is possible. Peaks of the week. What do you, you think Coach K feel? Uh, actually, I think the Coach K theory is he win this motherfucker going out. But what do I know? North Carolina's beating them already one time. At, it's farewell, right? Right. They beat them in Durham. So, yeah, just like the third time that I met in the like, last like 30 days or 40, 60 days or something. So, yeah. So, so we got North Carolina and Duke, final four picks. Who wins? Who wins North Duke. Carolina and Duke? Who are you picking out of that? Well, Coach I'm K's. going to North. I, I, I would say Coach K. Because it's this fairware tour, you got to throw that in there. That that that's right. a real. And component. there's going to be eight against five because the referees are all so you hope Duke fans. So you hope. Um, I'm going to go uh, and and North Carolina. Of course, I'm wearing this to show y'all. You know, God was a Carolina fan. That's why he painted the sky blue. Mm, uh, sound like Jordan. Yeah. That's some shit MJ say, right? That's exactly where I got that bullshit from. But I'm going to say North Carolina. Really? Yeah. Mm. Because they had more. Hype, and this is the first time they get to face each other. And just because I'm an ACC guy, mm. I know in North Carolina there are Duke fans, and then there's North Carolina fans. Mm. There's North Carolina State fans, but you know they they live in the in the in way out. Way. I'm gonna go North Carolina. I'm actually going with Duke just because of I, I think that the momentum of uh, Coach K's uh, farewell is a real one. And you know he's not playing, right? I know he's not playing. But yeah, that whole thing, and yeah, the eight against five, I think is going to be a real thing. I picked the Duke Blue Devils to beat North Carolina. Then we got Villanova in Kansas. Kansas. You picking Kansas right off the bat? Right off the bat. Well, this. Did one, you see Kansas? They attack the basket, and yeah. anybody that's aggressive, yeah. that plays aggressively, that thinks in an aggressive manner, to me, the, like I love. We're going to go to just to the pro. I love Westbrook mm. only because the way he attacks the basket. Yeah. And I think Kansas attacks the basket mm. way better than Villanova. In this situation, I'm going to say Villanova. I actually like how they actually play together. I like them on defense. Uh, well, I hate the Big East, and you don't. 
So yeah. the yeah. Big East. I, I have, I have, I have. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, you know what I'm saying? But I'm picking Villanova over Kansas. So should we have a bet that my it sounds team like wins? It sounds like it. Let's We're see. going to bet MGM. Like right. I'm not going to bet you. I'm going to go there and bet. And then whoever has the most. Who wins the whole thing? Kansas. Kansas wins the whole thing? Kansas wins the whole thing. Wow. Now, I haven't been wrong in 20 years. Wow. That's what's up. I'm That's going what with I Coach tell my daughter. I'm going with Coach K. I think Coach K go out on a high. I think <laughs> Coach K gets carried out that motherfucker. Right. He better get high because nah, nah, he ain't right. going out hey, You know what I'm high. saying? He might be high. You he's, know what I'm saying? He's right. going to get high as soon as they lose. He going to get high. He might be high upon arrival. He might smack a motherfucker. Might. <laughs> but Duke's going, hey, look, they going to carry them. They going to carry Coach K out that motherfucker no. straight up. No, they don't, they don't have the, Chris, they don't have Look, it. Christian Layton coming out the, out the, out the stairs, Grand Hill, Thomas Hill, Otis Hill, all them hills. All of them are all, over all the of, hill. All of them. They are all over the hill. All of them. I, I'm sorry. Mom and them, Daddy I love them. Coach K. Bye. We shall see. <laughs> Damon Leonard has <his> asked. <laughs> NBA picks. Horn is at Sixers. What night is it? Saturday night, uh, fun night. We got the Well, Horn. you have to tell him why you had to know the night. <laughs> see, this is why he had to hold, know the night. Because he knows if they are playing Saturday night, they got in Friday night. They know they fillied some fillies and stayed awake to 5.30. So whoever's visiting Philly on a, on a Saturday game is losing. If you put it that way, who are you picking? I'm picking Philly. Because <laughs> this was the deal. And now if I was playing Philly on a Thursday night, ain't nothing to do on Wednesday. I'm sleeping. But on Friday night in Philadelphia, oh my God. And they're going to go down there and have a Philly cheesesteak and New York's an hour away. And, and, and so is Atlantic <laughs> City. So I'm knowing the idea of athletes who aren't, oh, God. Uh, who don't realize that they have a job to do. Uh, I'm going, and you know Melo going to go out and all the light, all the, 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 you know, the light skin is back. So they're going to go with the light skin. He's going to be like, oh, these girls like me. This, no, just light skin is back. I'm going with Philly. And he's the best big man I've ever seen play next Embiid, to Shaquille. Embiid? Yeah. Terrell Embiid. His, his moves. See, you're not a big man to me. You're a small forward that lied to everybody and said you were 6'10". <laughs> that's, that's a lie. It's a lie. He's, he's a small forward <laughs> playing this position. You ever see the game when he get in the way of the small forward named the truth? Just so he can get the he's small forward. Um, I also got uh, Philly winning this. I, I think they play uh, different at home. I like the Hornets when they're at home, but on the road, yeah, I can understand it. But yeah, in this, I'll pick the Sixers in this. Saturday night, Nets at Hawks. The Nets in Atlanta. The <laughs> Nets in Magic City, you said? <laughs> at Tootsie's? At Follies? <laughs> so uh, once again, ladies and gentlemen, there are, there's, some, there's some collateral damage that happens when, when the bomb oh, goes God, off. And on Friday night in Atlanta, it's like being in Vegas on a Friday night. So you get to Atlanta, they're going to get some sweet tea, they're going to have some oxtail, they're going to have some fried chicken, they're going to have a girl with an escort car. Did I say escort? They're going to have a girl in a Mercedes Benz. Class. So they're not going to have the fuel, the proper fuel to be ready for the next night is what you're saying. Exactly. So who are you picking? Atlanta at home. Mm, okay. Uh, although uh, the Hawks do play well at home, I'm going to take, take the Nets on the road. I'm going to take the Nets on the road. I'm taking the Nets. The Nets on the road for all the other reasons that he didn't pick. <laughs> Third game Saturday night. The Heat in Chicago. The Heat went through a debacle, had a little thing with the coach. Him and, you know, Jimmy Butler and the coach had a whole thing. that Jimmy was, you know, from Chicago, so that means Hassan might get beat up mm, if he goes to the restaurant. Mm, no, I don't think so. I think he's going to be good, you know. Uh, the Bulls are playing unbelievable. Yeah, they are at home, too. Uh, DeRozan and um, Zach, exactly I, I'm yeah. going to go. I'm going to go with the Bulls at home. I'm always going to go with the Bulls, though. Facts, facts. I also like the Bulls at home against the Heat. The Heat are playing real well after a blowout with Sack, but... In this case, I like the Bulls. 
See, he has the same mentality of all Chicago people. You realize that? <laughs> Being raised kind of in Chicago kind of gets you Stop. a little crazy. Stop. Sounds like he's from Wisconsin. <laughs> Sunday, we got the Mavs at the Bucks. I'm going to go. I love J. Kidd. Um, Back in Milwaukee, his old stomping ground. I'm going to go with the Mavs. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. I should like uh, the Bucks at home, man. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's that time. Two weeks left in the in the season. Uh, I think I think the Bucks are going to start turning it, turning it on or getting ready for the playoffs. So I'm going to pick the Bucks at home. Then we got a back to back for the Sixers, and they're in Cleveland. Oh, you you want to hurry up and win and go home? Mm, basically, you, turn around, right? You just turn come around, play, play, come home. They're going home because mm. Cleveland is, you know. Philadelphia on Sunday like night right is there. a lot of fun. Like right there. And by the time you get on the plane at 10, you land at 11, 15, nice. and you go straight to the club. So you don't want to go to the club. You can't go to the club after you lose. What club? What club in Cleveland um, are you going to? No, no. When you, they're going to they're gonna play in Cleveland, and then they're going to get on their jet and fly back to Home, Philly. Right. And that's the Philly on Sunday night is off the chain. See, I know that these guys don't realize they're professional athletes. That's why I know how to bet against them. And I'm going to go. I think Cleveland doesn't have the space. Mm. I'm going with Philly. Really? I'm going to take Cleveland at home, man. Uh, I think they're getting ready for the playoffs. Uh, and uh, they play better to me at home. And they've been on a little funk. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take the Cavaliers against the Sixers. This is the BetMGM Picks of the Week on KG Certified. Hey! I love you, man. Call Get the ball. ball right? Oh, there's a basketball. And that's real mahogany, by the way. And he's watching the game. Paramount Mountain. The place where entertainment lives. Home to bumblebees, pounds, and birdies, <laughs> giant hippos, Wait. and flying jackasses. Let her rip, tater chip. Yep, this mountain's full of surprises. In fact, I'm not even Tim McGraw. <laughs>